This week in Jamaica now, outrage over Mocha Fest party. The Prime Minister deplores the staging of the event in breach of COVID rules. Rick's Cafe says sorry, but TP Deco has withdrawn its COVID compliance certificate. The latest in the Dayton Campbell controversy, he has totally rejected new allegations in a sexual misconduct claim. You want people to squat? You just want squatter politics? Why the St. Thomas Eastern MP is lashing the opposition leader Mark Golding. Portland man fights to expunge criminal record. Hannibal woman set ablaze allegedly by her lover, airlifted to the U.S. for treatment. And... Well, I feel like say, I could have married again. <laughs> <laughs> A centenarian says his hard-working nature keeps him alive. I'm Damian Mitchell and this is Jamaica Now. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has reacted to the outrage on social media over Rick's Cafe's staging of the Mocha Fest party this week. Hundreds of people in breach of COVID rules partied without masks at the Negril-based entertainment spot. The Prime Minister says he's asked for a full report into the breach and his own investigation will be conducted. Because it throws up something that we, have, we are always contending with, Mark, in our society. The unequalness of the society, the haves and the have-nots. Why is it that some people are allowed to party and others are not? The unequal nature of the society. And this government has a duty to ensure that the law is equally applied. In the meantime, Mr. Holness says he is expecting that the respected government agencies will move to enforce the laws that were infringed. And the tourism product development company, TP Deco, has revoked the COVID-19 compliance certification from Rick's Cafe. TP Deco says before Rick's Cafe can be allowed to accept visitors again, it must undergo recertification to ensure strict adherence to the established COVID-19 health and safety protocols. The company also says it takes very seriously reports of COVID breaches and that the appropriate sanctions will take full effect. Meanwhile, Rick's Cafe has admitted to breaching the COVID-19 safety laws and has said sorry. However, Rick's Cafe said that all people were temperature checked and hand sanitized and that face masks were required before entry. People's National Party PNP General Secretary Dr. Dayton Campbell has strongly rejected new sexual misconduct allegations against him. Campbell described the claims as baseless and scarless and accused PNP activist Karen Cross of being part of what he called a well-funded political agenda with the objective of forcing him out of office. Cross, along with bloggers Natalie Stack and Michelle Stern, are the subjects of a defamation lawsuit filed by Campbell. The former St. Anne Northwest MP has accused Cross and the other defendants of writing malicious, false and defamatory comments in relation to minors. In her defense, filed in May, Cross submitted statements from three females making claims dating back to years before they became adults. But Campbell is maintaining his innocence and is denying the claims. St. Thomas Eastern Member of Parliament Dr. Michelle Charles has launched a social media broadside against opposition leader Mark Golding for reportedly instigating animosity during his recent visit to Old Pira in the parish. Golding led a team to the community, reportedly upon the request of residents who say they are being deprived access to the beach and a disputed island. My issue with it is the fact that the Member of Parliament, instead of standing up for the rights of the community, which are being infringed by the alleged owner asserting dominion over the property and restricting their access to the beach and the island, instead she has seems to have sided with her family's commercial interests. That's a conflict and uh, her role as a member, a member of parliament it would be compromised if that's a position she took. But Dr. Michelle Charles, the daughter of former Speaker of the House, Pernell Charles, seemed to have sided with her family's commercial interest. You want people to squat. You just want squatter politics. You want to encourage people to squat. That's what you want to do. Instead, you encourage people and, and, and let them learn and get skills and training. That's not what you want. No. You didn't come to Eastern St. Thomas, come to Pira to see what the government of Jamaica has planned. I came to you and I welcomed you on this property, thinking that you wanted to see the beautiful beaches, but that's not what you wanted. You wanted to make it seem as if we have a conflict. 
with the people of Pira. A Portland carpenter who says he was framed twice and ended up spending eight months in prison 30 years ago is now seeking to have his records cleared. But it has been almost a year in waiting for a response to his expungement application. 52-year-old David Hamilton was convicted of housebreaking and larceny in May 1986 and was sentenced to one year in prison, suspended for three years. Nearly two years later, he was found guilty of receiving stolen property and sentenced to 12 months in prison. Years later, in 1996, he was arrested and charged for having a ganja spliff and was fined. If we get a little chance, go in the Canadian section and look for some doctor and can give me a deal. Yeah, if we can walk with again, which them have been kind of that, and we have to be personally good to that, professional, you know, so that's not good for me, you know. That makes me feel happy, you know, get back a nice operation and we can walk with again and do some more stuff, you know. Hamilton's case is being championed by Patricia Trainer his Canadian common-law wife, who is seeking to wipe his slate clean in order for him to travel to Canada to meet his in-laws and to enjoy the country. Imagine he's 55 years old and these are things that happened so long ago that were never just in the first place. These things happen in Canada too, so it's not just Jamaica, but I think it's time for Jamaicans to really start to have a conversation about privilege, light skin privilege, my privilege, I'm using my privilege to be able to speak out, you know, the police treat me differently than they treat him. The Hanover woman who was set ablaze last week, allegedly by her jealous boyfriend, has been airlifted to the United States for treatment. Nicola Clark received extensive injuries. The trip was made possible by the Kingston-based nonprofit organization San Mira Foundation Limited, which is underwriting the cost. It hurt us so bad that we jump into action with the burn unit that we, that Jamaica needs are to refurbish our start. San Marino Foundation lead the charge and we are in dialogue with our international partner to make some repair of the burn unit that is here in Jamaica so that when something like this nature happens again, if it should happen in the future, Jamaica will have a burn unit ready and waiting to help the citizens. Nicola's mother, Lolita Scarlett, said she was grateful for the support. I feel very good right now. I cannot even explain how I feel. Because even this morning I was crying. I was crying and my daughter said, Mommy, don't cry. Just hold faith and believe in God. And I said, alright. And what is her condition like? Her condition is very bad because the whole of her skin burn off. The Caribbean Examinations Council, CXC, has further delayed this year's exams by two weeks. Earlier this week, the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, urged CXC to delay the start of the external examinations by three weeks and to simplify the content and methodology. CXC administers the Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Exam, CAPE, and the Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate, CSEC, examinations. CXC Registrar Dr. Wayne Wesley said the examinations will now be on June 28. Results will be released during the last week of September into the first week of October, as previously decided. All components, that is, papers 1, 2, and 3, will be administered. Meanwhile, students now have until May 31 to defer sitting the 2021 examination. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at onlinefeedback at gleanerjm.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. Like this video on our YouTube page, subscribe today, and turn on your notifications. I'm Damian Mitchell, and before we go, centenarian William Jennings says his hardworking nature keeps him alive. I born and grew up in a place in St. Catherine called Gold Mine. And when we come here, I'm a big man. Tell us, how are you feeling? Well, I feel like, say, I could have married again. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I would have been able to work for me and somebody. Wow. Only the insight feel me. I wave on the side, not no feel me. When did you lose your sight? I lose the sight more than 20 years ago now. And I'm going to tell you. When I start to go stone, then tell me, say, this eye, I've been glaucoma. A long time, I look about the eye. But all the treatment is never better. I work in here, I do alcohol at the work. Sawboard, cut cane, 
Planky and make sugar, well, no sugar, do everything. But I never have a trade consonant for that. Cannot read. Why are you so fit and, and what? You have a special diet? I leave them here at fertilizer food and the fertilizer food goes. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm merely here to make me tell something. When you see here, they say hard work. Me can't tell you, say me do hard work. Yeah. Every work that a man can't pick out right, yes or no? Midweek. Midweek.